Now, for many pub goers in the capital, the phrase last orders is leaving an increasingly bitter taste. According to the British Beer and Pub Association, 11 London pubs are closing every week. That may be partly due to the recession, beer taxes and the smoking ban, but some landlords say the main culprit is within the industry itself. Well, Matthew Morris is in a bar in Clapham now and can tell us more. Matthew. Riz, welcome to the Eagle. It's run by Simon and David. Simon's chatting to some of the punters. Uh, David's s s serving behind the bar. Everybody looks pretty happy. But just to give you an indication of just how fed up they are here, they say they work a 60-hour week, each of them. And after all the maths has been done, they say that they earn £3.80 an hour. That's £2 an hour less than the national minimum wage. It's a busy London local. The regulars certainly like it the best pub in the area. The beer is some of the best beer in the whole of London. The Eagle is owned by Enterprise Inns, one of the biggest pub companies or pub co's. Simon and David, their tenants, have to buy all their beer from them. It's known as the beer tie. The business turns over more than £400,000 a year. Last night we took just over £1,000. Um, that means that uh, we, as in Simon and myself, will take about 80 quid. that's £40 each. Out of a, just over a grand, and our pub company will get something like 54 to 60 percent of that. A parliamentary select committee looking into pub companies reported earlier this year and noted that even in those that had a high turnover, more than half the publicans earned less than £15,000. You look around most pubs, they're dilapidated, they're not getting painted, they're not getting repairs done on them, simply because all of the profit goes in the back pocket of the big pub companies. Commenting on the Eagle, Enterprise Inn said the lease agreement contains a tie for the supply of beers only, which are supplied at a discount from Brewers List prices. Mr Clark's claims in relation to the prices paid for beer are untrue, adding Mr Clark pays substantially less rent for the pub than would be the case were the pub not tied for beer. In Simon's case, however, the rent Enterprise asked for was found by an independent arbitrator to be £17,000 too high. We seem to arrive at a situation where if a tenant works really, really hard and does a good job for the pub, the lion's share of the advantage goes back to the pub co and not to the tenant. That's clearly wrong. Why are we here? We want to move beer. That's why there are protest groups like Pub Revolution and Justice for Licensees fighting for the future of the London pint. Yes, as you can see, the regulars are coming in for a drink after a hard day's work. Of course, the hard day's work continues into the night for the publicans here, often working into the early hours. Now, they say that their struggle is, yes, about the money they have to pay for the beer and the money they have to pay in rent, but it's also about a place that's important for the local community. Riz. Thanks very much, Matthew. And you can see a special investigation into why so many of the capital's pubs are struggling on Inside Out London tonight at 7.30. That's here on BBC One. After a quarter of a century, the capital is to play host to the world's top grandmasters. The game of chess has long been dominated by the likes of Russia and Ukraine. And from tomorrow, Britain's best will compete against them at home. The London Chess Classic hopes to inspire a new generation of players, as Sarah Orchard reports. The score is 1-0 and there are 27 days to go. That's tonight's shock news from the first semi-final in the World Chess Championships. 1983 and the great Garry Kasparov, considered by many as the best chess player of all time, was in the capital. Even more shocking than that result, since then London hasn't been considered a high-profile venue on the chess circuit until now. On the London Eye today, two of Britain's best showed off their skills ahead of the London Chess Classic, including Luke McShane from Pimlico. Uh, there's been nothing like this uh, in, in London for a very long time. Um, and it's uh, not, not every day I get the chance to play against such a high calibre of, of opposition. It's great. I mean, I, I can wake up in my own bed and then go to, uh, get, go to play my chess game. That's, you know, it's, it's something I don't get every day. Four of the world's best players join Britain's top four at Olympia for the eight-day tournament that's expected to attract over 100,000 viewers on the internet. For anyone thinking that chess isn't a cool or a glamorous way to earn a living, you may be interested to know that the prize fund for this tournament is £89,000 and the elite players in the world are all millionaires. Obviously, if you get to the very top, you can make a good living. Um, and so really being able to travel the world like I have and uh, make, making a living, it's just really, it's in, in a sense, a dream job. 
The current world number one is 19-year-old Norwegian Magnus Carlsen, a child prodigy coached by Kasparov himself. Very nice to be in, um, in such a big city, um, western capital. It's something that should be uh, done more often, I, I think. I hope that uh, this tournament will become traditional because I wouldn't mind at all coming every year to London to play a big event. Chess is thought to help children improve their maths and critical thinking skills. Hopes are this tournament will encourage more British children to take up the game. Sarah Orchard, BBC London News. Finally, uh, London Underground are on the lookout for a fair dodger and this is the criminal. The sly fox attempted to make his way onto the Victoria line on Saturday night but was prevented from getting as far as the platform at Walthamstow Central. Uh, don't forget, we're here for you to send us your pictures of unusual sightings in and around the capital. The address, you can see it there, you're London at bbc.co.uk. I can't imagine uh, what we're going to get. Well, uh, time for a look at the weather now with Wendy, <laughs> our very own foxy lady. <laughs> How's the week looking? Thank you very much indeed. A very wily fox, it has to be said. I expect he's trying to get away from the rain today. Really heavy in places, but this week it is improving. Some settled weather to come, the like of which we haven't seen for some time. And it's because we've got high pressure starting to build in. Finally, the rule of thumb really over the last few weeks has been low pressure after low pressure, throwing this rain and strong winds our way.